Windows. All right, we've booted back into Windows. Let's go to real temp and see what the temperature is at idle. Okay, uh, it's not what I was hoping for, um, somewhere in the mid-30s, but it's decreased about 3, maybe 4 degrees Celsius. It's not bad, every little bit helps. You have to keep in mind that some thermal compounds, including the one we just used, require a curing time to be their most effective. Usually it's one to two weeks of use. And curing basically just means that over time it creates a better connection between the heat sink and the processor. And that may, over a few weeks, bring us somewhere down into the mid-30s at idle. Let's fire up Prime95 and see what it looks like at load. We'll let it run about 5 or 10 minutes. While we're waiting, I thought I'd point out something. If we look up here, it has the base clock and the multiplier. And the multiplier right now is 21. If you remember in the first lesson, we mentioned turbo mode. That's what's kicking in here. What turbo mode does is it allows the multiplier to go up by 1 to do an automatic overclock when the CPU is being fully utilized. That's something we're going to turn off in the BIOS while we do our overclocking because we want to be in full control of what speed the processor is running at. And after we've reached a stable overclock, we will go back in and turn on turbo mode so it can give us a little bit extra performance. We will run Prime95 to make sure it is stable using turbo mode. We're about four minutes in, and it looks like it's going to be around a three degree improvement at load as well. Again, not what we were hoping for, but over a period of a week or two, the curing process should kick in and lower the temperatures down below 80 degrees. We'll close down Prime95 to get a gauge on how well our CPU is performing with the stock settings, we need to run a CPU benchmark. We're running Windows XP here, so we'll download 3 dmark 6 If you're running Windows Vista or Windows 7, you can download 3 dmark Vantage. Vantage does not work in Windows XP. Both of these benchmarks will push the CPU to its limits and give us a benchmark we can use to compare the performance with the current stock settings to the performance after we overclock the CPU. Each time we reach a stable overclock, we can run this benchmark to show the performance improvement. This isn't necessary in overclocking the CPU, but it is interesting and satisfying to see the improvements. Once it downloads, just run the EXE and install it. We've already installed 3D Mark 6, so I'll fire it up. Before we run the benchmark, it's important to close down as many other running programs as possible. Even your browser can take up 10 to 15% of the CPU's time, and this can affect the benchmark score. Whatever you do, just try and make sure the programs running are consistent between now and the next time you benchmark after you overclock to give as true a comparison as possible. The free versions of 3D Mark 6 and Vantage don't allow you to select only the CPU tests so I'll run the standard benchmark. This tests the video card as well. In 3D Mark 6, this CPU score with the stock settings is 5,324. In the next lesson, we will go into the BIOS, go over all the benchmark related settings and where they can be found in the different motherboard makers BIOSes. Then we will do a basic overclock, taking this Core i7-920 CPU running at stock 2.66 GHz to 3.2 GHz.